Well, welcome back to Templates for Change, Nature's Laws and Harmonies series. And this is part two, and this is to do with the first law we're going to talk about, which is duality. And not surprisingly, perhaps, this is to do with origins. And that's the origin of absolutely everything in our universe, that which we can see, that which we can't see. So let's have a look at this. Now, what is fascinating here is that duality, or you might say a twofold harmony, is found at the very origins of our universe and all life. And at the basis of this, there are two appearances we have in our universe, two appearances only, one is energy and the other is matter. And in energy, there are two core energies. One is positive and one is negative. And when we look, you might say, into the more physical side of things, like a particle, the smallest original particle, hydrogen, then that is made up of only two elements, the positive and the negative, the proton and the electron. And when our universe began, Almost all the universe, in terms of physical matter, was hydrogen. There's a bit of helium too, but mostly all hydrogen. Now, even when we have matter, then there's matter and there's always antimatter. And when we get to living forms later in our universe's existence, well, we need two genders for life, don't we? Masculine and feminine in some form or another. Two different aspects of life that come together to form the child, to form the next generation of some form. And cells, when living cells, when they divide, well, they only divide into two. They don't divide into three and a half or five or eleven. They only divide into two. And they divide into another two, of course. So, in the origin of the universe, of matter, of energy, of life, of division of cells, we're always talking about duality. Throughout the whole of universe, the whole of life, uh, and the whole of everything that we can see and register. Now, what's fascinating in this, of course, is we've only, in a sense, discovered this scientifically quite recently. But again, ancient man already seemed to know this from experience thousands of years ago. And the symbol of yin and yang, these two different principles, positive, negative, male and female duality, appeared at least three and a half thousand years ago. And isn't that fascinating how ancient man knew many things that we know scientifically today based on experience of life. Okay. Well, we're going to have a, a little section here for geeks, so you can just pass through this quite quickly if you want to. But this is just looking a little bit more at science, because you can see science has shown and proven that duality lies at the absolute origins of our universe right from the Big Bang. And so that's what we were talking about of particles. You've got particles, you've got antiparticles, particle types, you've got elementary particles and composite particles. Material form, you've only got energy or matter. And elementary particles, you've only got two there, which is fermions, which is the basis of matter, and bosons, which is the basis of energy. And then energy transmission, you've only got particles and waves. And here's a little diagram of what we're talking about here, how energy transmits along a wave or by particles knocking together and passing things on. Now, okay, we're not all geeks, but it's quite interesting to see, isn't it, that science is showing us how duality is bound up with the origins of everything. And we then look further and we can see this in a study of life and the workings of our planet Earth. And we still can't escape the principle of duality at its origins and core structures. And I just put some examples here. There are loads of them, just a few here to go through quite quickly. And for example, the blueprint of life, you have to have two parts of that. One's DNA, the other's RNA. And then 
in life organisms, there's only two types, one with a nucleus and one with no nucleus. And in advanced life forms can be divided into two, two great divisions. One is plants and the other is animals. And even on our planet Earth, you know, we have two polarities in the magnetic fields of our planet, one the North Pole and the other the South Pole. And here's a lovely, very unusual picture of the South Pole. Uh, that's a lovely picture of our planet, isn't it? And then Earth's weather, the whole of Earth's weather is created by two systems. One is high pressure and the, and the other is low pressure. Everything's based on high and low pressure moving about and doing things to each other. And then finally on the Earth's surface, well, we have an oceanic surface, we have a continental surface, we have actually got oceanic crust and continental crust. So here again is many more examples. You can do loads more examples if you want to, but this, this may well be enough to show you that, well, duality lies at the bottom of everything, doesn't it? Now, of course, not only is it in a kind of experience of science, there's also the direct experience of ourselves in our lives because here we have two examples taken between high pressure systems and low pressure systems in our weather because as they say red sky in the morning and here's a red sky in a winter's morning and this is likely to be low pressure bringing rain and of course unhappy sailors Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. But then here's another picture from the same place in West Wales, from the valley in West Wales. Beautiful, dry, frosty, crystal morning skies, a, a beautiful winter high pressure, and happy shepherds. So you can see that we have a, a rain warning and we have a beautiful high pressure warning. And incidentally, for those of you who might like to know, small thing here is that sheep they don't mind the cold because they've got woolly coats but they don't like the rain because their coats can then get wet and they get cold like that too so it's method in the madness of those sayings now duality actually goes into the human sphere as well and goes through the whole of human design and the structure of human it's quite fascinating to look at human structures and you find this duality again at the origins of everything in the human system obviously there are two sexes male and female but there are two blood systems one is arterial and the other is venal and one carries blood back to the heart for cleaning and one sends fresh blood from the heart out into the body there are two sides to our brain they've now discovered isn't it right is m imaginative more creative left is more practical and analytical and we're lucky we have both of course then we have two nervous systems a voluntary nervous system you, know, you govern what the nerve does if you want to pick something up you have to think about it to do it there's an involuntary nervous system for example our breathing the nervous system make sure we breathe whether we think about it or not we've got two kinds of vision two kinds of structures in our eyes for the two kinds of vision we've got black and white vision we've got color vision and we've got two kinds of blood cells we've got a red energizing blood cell and we've got a white healing blood cell so again this duality this law of two is found everywhere the universe the planet the human life and on it goes and duality in the natural world around us as well as you might suspect now we've noted evergreens and deciduous plants and of course there are acid and alkali soils that we have to consider and we can often watch bees moving from plant to plant as they pollinate the female part of the plant with the male pollen etc so male and female go through the whole of the plant kingdom too and here's a picture of an old tree in a wood and we may walk past it and think it looks lovely, but actually on this tree are the two great plant kingdoms of our world. It's everywhere, isn't it? So let's have a little bit of a further look at that. 
So here's a small chart bringing some of this information together and looking at how so many things in nature have their origin lying in a duality. And we've talked about these before, but as we can see, all soils originate in either acid or alkaline state. The evergreen and deciduous trees. The gas exchange of plants, oxygen and carbon dioxide, which are the two gases, of course, that we need to live and plants do as well though slightly differently to us. And here is that wonderful plant division of mosses on that old tree and the higher vascular plants or the tree itself. All those plants of that kingdom, such as trees. Now in the higher plant kingdom, here we see, again, it originates with two different types of plants. Some are flowering and some are non-flowering. And as we've noted, of course, then there's, in plants, there's still the male and the female aspects of plants too, as in animals. So that's a start on duality and the origins of everything. And so now we're going to move on to have a look at the triad of energies, which is the next key principle. Now, just before we do that, we're just going to have a quick summary of the six great laws of nature that we're looking at in this series. You might have dropped into the series looking at one or another. So this is at the end of each section. There's just going to be a brief summary which you can cast your eyes over. And we have started here at duality or two at the origins of all things. And now we're going to move on to the next one which is the triad or the three natures of energy at the heart of the universe and life. And then we'll be following with the other four in due course. Okay, so on we go.